Protectors of the Suna Suna Protectors of the Suna Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. Welcome to another session of our uh, hadith class. And these are the hadiths from the book entitled Get to Know Your Lord. Oh, no, the book entitled The Divine Hadith Tutsi. And these are, this book is compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. Please go to atlionline.com and pick up a copy of this book. It's only $5. And uh, we're on hadith number 81 today. And this hadith, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has angels who go about on the roads seeking those who remember Allah. And whenever they find people doing so, they call out to one another and say, come to what you are looking for. So they surround the people with their wings up to the lowest heaven. Allah then asked them, what are my servants saying? And they say, they are calling upon you, praising you, glorifying you. And Allah then asked, did they ever see me? And the angels say, no, they've never seen you. And Allah asked them, what if they did see me? And the angels say, if they saw you, they would have engaged more earnestly in worshiping and glorifying you and would have uh, pushed themselves much more. Then Allah says, what are they asking for? And the angels say, they are asking you for paradise. And Allah says, has they ever seen it? And the angels say, no, they've never seen it. And Allah says, what would they do if they did see it? And the angels say, if they saw it, they would have been more intensely eager to get to it and would have asked more earnestly for it and would have had a greater desire for it. Then Allah will ask them, what are they seeking refuge from? And the angels say, it is from hell. And Allah then will ask them, have they ever seen it? And the angels will say, no, they haven't. And Allah will ask them, what if they did see hell? And the angels will say, um, uh, say if they saw it, they would be more earnest in trying to stay away from it. And they would have feared it. And then Allah says, I call you to witness that I have forgiven them. And one of the angels will say, among them is so-and-so who does not belong with them, but has come only for something he wants. And then Allah will say, these are the people who are seated together, and he who sits with them will not be miserable. So they will, the angels will basically let Allah know, you know, most of the people here are here seeking your forgiveness. Most of the people here are engaged in learning about you, Allah, learning about your religion. But there are a couple of people here who ain't here to learn. They just here. And Allah lets it be known, well, if they still benefit, even those people who came with the intentions of trouble or anything else, even if they benefit, you know, from what they learn, then they won't be uh, uh, bad people. Maybe listening to us will help them to change the condition of themselves and become better. So this is one of my favorite hadiths because it speaks about how uh, whenever the Muslims come together in a group like we're doing right now to learn about a law, to learn about Islam, the angels of mercy that walk the earth surround us and they beat their wings and they seek forgiveness for us. And they will stay in our company until we stop, until we close up our computers and leave. And then they let Allah know, you know, what we were here doing, you know, trying to get closer to him, trying to learn about him. And this is a wonderful hadith for us to ponder because Ramadan just ended. And we want to keep that spiritualness going, you know, until next Ramadan. We want to continue uh, to seek the pleasure of Allah. You know, we want to continue to get closer to Allah. We want to continue to grow in our knowledge and understanding of the deen, even though Ramadan has ended. So uh, this hadith serves as a great encouragement 
to keep us coming to the classes, uh, to keep us learning. And I was uh, looking right before class at the attendance. Usually I get over all Ramadan, I've had over 100 to 200 people present listening to the classes. Today, I just only had 70 people. I said, well, maybe the people could, some of the people could be out celebrating the Eid still, you know, I don't know what some people can just be tired, but I really hope that uh, the Muslims continue to come here to learn a deen. I really hope that you guys that's listening to me now were not just Ramadan Muslims. You think that since Ramadan's over, you're going to now go back to your old ways of, of doing things the way you've been doing them without uh, remembering Allah, without taking the time to learn this deen correctly or properly. I hope you don't revert uh, back to that because that defeats the whole purpose of fasting. Remember, Allah imposed fasting upon us to make us righteous, better people. If you're going to go back to your old ways and there's no growth there, you know, so this is a good hadith to ponder since Ramadan has ended every time we come together as a group to learn and remember Allah, those angels are here making dua for us, asking Allah to forgive us. And as long as our intentions are sincere, Allah says he will forgive us. Okay, so what do you guys think? How does this hadith impact you and your personal life? Who would like to share? Go ahead, take the mic. Um, based on my understanding of, I'm not listening to you, mashallah, um, I feel like it's just a reminder to, to praise Allah in everything I'm doing, whether I'm driving, whether I'm just going about my, you know, my livelihood or whatever. And it's just something about that, knowing that you get that extra protection, um, because you're, because I'm, you know, remembering Allah, praising Allah, or, and also asking him for forgiveness too. And I could do that at any time, you know, only Allah knows. And um, the angels too. Alhamdulillah. Exactly. Just Hadith, she said, it reminds her to think about Allah as often as she can. And when she's riding in her car and, and cleaning her room. How to join uh, the Zoom room? You just go to www.soonerfollowers.net and click on join live class. It'll bring you in. And by the way, for those of you listening on Facebook and YouTube, if you look at the thread, I think I do have the link there. It says www.soonerfollowers.net. That's the link. Just click on uh, join, go there and uh, click where it says join live class. It'll bring you into the Zoom room. If you don't have Zoom on your cell phone, it'll download it for you. Download it and it'll bring you in. Yes, anyone else would like to share? Go ahead. Well, I can say, I can say that uh, it's, you know, I have a lot to ponder, a lot to think about, really. And I find myself doing that almost immediately. And uh, my closeness, wanting to stay closer, close to Allah, to become closer to Allah, to learn more the religion of Islam, because I'm feeling right now that that's the only thing that's going to save me. I know it. That that's the only thing that's going to save me in this lifetime and the next. I think about my family and I think about where their head is now and I don't really know, Allah knows best, but I, I'll leave that to them and Allah. For as myself, I gotta work hard make sure that no slip ups. I was thinking today about the things that I have learned, what I have accomplished during Ramadan. And I, I like that. I like it. There are some things that I have began to change already. 
and I'm grateful for that. And I hope I remain grateful, you know. But uh, I'm really going to have to really stay prayed up, stay strong, become stronger. And uh, keep asking along to increase my faith, increase my strength, increase me in every way. Because uh, right now, I'm not really feeling that. I mean, I'm not feeling that happy. And I don't know why. But um, I just pray to Allah that I'll become stronger. And that my faith, my deen, that I continue to hold on to that rope of us of Islam. Because right now I'm feeling like that's that's well, I mean that's a good thing, but I'm I'm really holding on tight. You know, really holding on tight. Looking at the world. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for sharing that, Sister Sabrine. Alhamdulillah. Yes, guys, you know, it's all about uh, trying to remember Allah, you know, throughout the day. Allah uh, has told us that we were created to worship him. And just because we say we believe in him is not enough. He's going to test us in our belief. He's going to throw us a curve ball every now and then. Okay. And he will throw that curl, throw that curve ball to us to see if we will truly turn to him and worship him as we were created to do. And so this hadith lets us know that when we do remember him, Allah remembers us. You know, those angels will surround us and that and whatever supplications we make, Allah will hear them and he will help us. You know, but it's all about, like he says, take one step towards him and he'll come a fathom towards us he's just waiting on us to take that one step okay yes go ahead sister mina um i wanted to say about this hadith is basically it's so refreshing because it's just like um like saying uh the angels is is you shouldn't be like sad or anything because the angels is basically praying for you and it's like it makes you like so good like like say for instance if you down or sad or whatever and it's like don't give up because it's not just you talking to Allah it's basically the angels is 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 hearing you seeing you and basically speaking on your behalf too so like that that right there is like a beautiful thing to me it's like so refreshing just to hear that it's like uh don't give up whatever you doing Allah see you a lot hear you, you know, so it's just, it's, it's just really touching. It's like beautiful, so beautiful. Exactly, guys. The angels are our friends and protectors. They're the friends of the believers, not the jinn. The jinn are our enemies. And like I said, in regards to good jinn, you would never come across a good jinn because a good jinn obeys the law and the law has commanded the jinn to stay away from us. The people that help us, our protectors and our friends are the angels, you know, and that's why, like she said, we should never feel alone. We need to understand as Muslims that the angels of mercy are always around us, you know, there to shield us, protect us, and to make dua for us. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead, Sister Zarina. Yeah, just reiterating what um, Sister Mina said and what you just said too. A lot of times we have, might have the mentality that it's me against the world. But if you're striving to be a, um, a servant of Allah, a good one, and you know you're doing your best for Allah's sake, it's kind of like you and the angels. <laughs> you know, like they got you got somebody got your back. You know, and you have to remember that. You know, it just kind of motivates you to keep it in perspective and not be so depressed and down because we're travelers anyway. So we're not going to feel at home. You know, like Sister Sabrina was saying, you're not home. You know, your, desti your, des your destination is inshallah Jannah. So that, exactly. that's home. Exactly. Alhamdulillah, guys. Yeah, so this is a wonderful hadith I want you guys to put into practice. I don't want any of you to ever feel that you're alone in this world. Shaitan wants us to feel that way. 
Shaitan wants us to believe that we're alone. Shaitan wants us to believe that there's no one to help us. We have to overcome Shaitan by understanding that that's not true. You know, the angels of mercy are always around. They're always near. And Allah is closer to us, like he says, than our juggler vein. He's just a, 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 a supplication away just a supplication away. He, he's waiting for us to turn to him and call upon him. Yes, go ahead, Sister Faisal. Yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, to me, this hadith is very inspiring. Um, it actually inspires me to just do a little bit more. Um, I've shared in the past uh, how I started doing um, two rakahs of the sunnah after fajr and alhamdulillah i've been consistent in that um and then during this ramadan i started doing just one witr so this hadith just inspires me to just continue to do that just a little bit more and be consistent in the little things like just one rakah of the witr um, inshallah, that's what I plan on doing because this hadith, I mean, although, although Allah knows the answers to these questions that he's asking the angels, um, you know, we just don't know what is hidden from us. You know, Allah says, have they seen me? And the angels say, they, they said, no, they have not seen you, but if they were to see you, they would be earnest in doing more. And that's how I feel, you know, I don't know what is hidden for me. Same with paradise. Like oh, they, Allah asks the angels, have they seen paradise? No, they have not. But if they were to see it, they would do more intense deeds. You just don't know what is hidden from you. So this hadith really inspires me to just do just a little bit more of what I can do. SubhanAllah, it's just really inspiring. Yes, alhamdulillah. Like she said, I like how she worded that. If we only knew, we'd be wishing we had done more. Subhana Allah. You know, it's a very inspiring. Yes, go ahead, Sister Amina Fresno. I was basically going to say the same thing. She kind of like took my words, but the fact that we don't even know, we have never seen Allah, and yet we do this with the hopes that he's gonna give us this what we're asking for we we ask for paradise we ain't never seen no paradise but we have that hope and faith in Allah that he will give it to us this is just amazing to me it's so beautiful this hadith. it is it's an uh, excellent hadith for us to uh in ramadan with you know and think about with for this upcoming year guys i mean we want to continue to strive uh, to do as many good deeds as we can, like we did during this month. And just know, because on the day of judgment, we'll be wishing that we had a, oh my God, I wish I did take advantage of my time and do more striving, you know? So, Supana Allah, you know, we don't want to be one of those people saying, if only I hadn't, or if only I had a, you know? So, it's a great uh, hadith to start the new year off with. Uh, for us since Ramadan has come to an end. Yeah, any other comments about this wonderful hadith? Any other comments? Just one little uh, thing. Sorry, um, uh, sorry to interrupting you. Uh, okay, actually, I want to ask this. Uh, actually, I am in new in a webinar. Please tell me about this mission and uh, where are you from? Actually, I am from India and uh, I joined first time today. So please tell me about uh, in last uh, now, tell you about what I'm sorry. What does he? What did he say, Pfizer? I couldn't understand him well. Um, uh, my sound is kind of low. Did yeah, brother... I'm from India. Myself and Sabriaz. Oh, you're from I mean... India. He sounds like Brother yeah. Ahmad. Oh, that's not Ahmad speaking. Okay, okay. And what what was he saying? Go ahead. Uh, actually, I said that uh, uh, today I'm uh, joined this webinar. I don't know who are you. I don't know who, uh, what your mission. Please tell me about that. Oh, you want? He wants to know who I am. Just yes, what the yes, class yes, yes. is about. 
Oh, okay. My name is, I'm Sister Layla Nasheba. I've been giving Dawah on the internet since 1986. This website is Sunnah Followers Online. You know, we've been around since 1986 on the internet and we teach Islam and its truthfulness based on the Quran and the authentic hadiths with the understanding of the companions. So we focus in here on Akita classes for the Muslims to learn what it means to believe in Allah. And we also focus on the Sunnah, the Hadiths, you know, and the, the, the history of Islam, the stories of the companions and all of that. So basically our mission is to call the Muslims back to Islam and its truthfulness based on the Quran and the Sunnah and not based on uh, innovation, uh, propaganda, uh, politics, or those things that take us away from what the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. Yeah, and yeah, that's what, and all uh, thank our you classes, so much. yeah, all our classes are free. And like I said, we've been doing it for a long time. We've been around since 1986. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Faisal. No, one thing I forgot to mention is, you know, during Ramadan, there are some bad habits that um, we've trained ourselves to get away from. And one of them for me is just like just watching TV, even if it's 30 minutes or an hour, whatever it is, I've trained myself to get away from that. And I've learned how, you know, TV is a waste of time, at least for me, <laughs> you know, yeah. so now i'm more um consumed with just reading or you know of course attending the classes um reading the books from um Sheikh adli had written so i've just gotten away from I, i've better myself basically you know i've gotten away from bad habits um and i hope to continue this inshallah yeah that's the thing a lot of you will find uh, especially coming to these classes you ain't tv is a waste of time i don't get to watch much the only time i'll turn it on is when i'm trying to go to sleep when i after i'm done with the classes here and everything i'll put on and the stuff that you find yourself watching i just watch stuff that's not that's probably of no interest to anybody else and i just put it on to fall asleep to really yeah yeah you know? some of the things that i used to be interested in i'm just like this is a waste of time let me just yeah turn this i off. watch none of that yeah. stuff I, I just put on something and just just fall asleep to it mm -hmm. just to have that sound in the background <laughs> but i don't you know you find out your interests just change when you were when you start to remember a law when we put a law first and foremost in our lives and try to work on bettering ourselves you'll be surprised at you know how things that you appear to be such great of greatness and importance is really nothing because like the Allah says in the Quran, this world is nothing but a uh, 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 short, short passing moments. There's nothing good here. It's temporary. Nothing. Everything here is just, uh, you know, far fetched. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually found myself watching the nature show last night. And that helps me to better understand, you know, about Allah's creation. Like I was just observant as to how when they were hunting it was Allah who was providing them the food you know when it rained it was out mm -hmm. in the desert in Africa like Allah provided water for them subhanAllah it was just part of remembering Allah so that's the stuff I, well, I was watching that survivor I watched um that naked and afraid show because I, I find that amazing how they how it is just imagine you have no choice but to depend on a law if you're put in a desert or you're put in a jungle you're put in a frozen that was watching frozen and afraid i mean you're put in those circumstances and you them, them people have no choice but to call upon a law for fire you know they got to go out and hunt for their own food there is no grocery store i mean they fishing eating bugs eating ants i'm like oh my god and it causes you to be more thankful you know i thank a lot when i watch those type of shows i, it, I, it, I even survivor i just thank a lot and you i like that show survivor because it shows you how people are you see all the evil characteristics 
that the prophet Muhammad warned us of how when people try to save themselves, they'll smile in your face and stab you in the back. You know, they'll be sitting there smiling, telling you that they got your back and voting you off the next. It's those shows teach you about people and it teaches you and you can't help but see that we are dependent on a law. You know, and I'm like, well, I'm sitting here watching this type of stuff instead of watching what I used to watch back. I don't even look at movies, all those movie channels and don't look at no movies sitting there watching nature shows or survival shows and things like that. SubhanAllah. Yes. Go ahead, Sister Norto. Okay, yeah. Um, I just wanted to add, um, <laughs> for me, uh, this hadith um, makes me think of, you know, like for me, it makes me think of, you know, what lies behind the other side of the door. You know, we might be facing something um, difficult, all of us are, and some of us know, you know, the pain is going to end, but we just don't know when. And I think even through all that, there's also ease in that, you know? Just like how Allah says, we haven't seen paradise, but if we have seen it, we would do whatever it takes to get there. For um, for now, some you know, some things might seem hard, but it will pay off at the end, and you'll truly understand just why Allah was making you go through all those tests, just for you to taste the reward He has prepared for you. Most of us can say the reward is sweeter when you work for it, I, especially for me. Like when I think of my um job, like I know that like. When I finally get that paycheck, I'm like, yeah, this was what I was. I hate that job, but like, this is the reward. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. And also, like, when something's also given, like, if something's given to you when you didn't work for it, it seems too easy. But when you actually strive and work for it, that's when you realize, oh, yeah, this is what I was working. Like, the reward is so much sweeter when you actually work for it instead of instead of it being given to you. So that's just what I wanted to add. Exactly. And that's what this hadith is, is speaking about, you know, you know, and it is, it's going to pay off for us. A lot of us, the believer, remember the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this world is a prison for the believer. It's only a paradise for the unbeliever. You know, we go through ups and downs. We go through tests and trials. We go through struggle after struggle after struggle, and we end up with nothing, but it'll pay off in the long run. We'll, inshallah, we'll have everything in the hereafter. Whereas the Kafir, this is what they worked for. They'll have this world, and when they die, they have nothing coming. So like she said, it'll eventually pay off for us. We'll eventually, we'll see the fruit of what we the labor that we went through in this world, our sacrifices will pay off when we're in that grave. And, and, and especially when we stand before Allah on that day of judgment. Yes, go ahead, Jamila. Jamila? I'm here. I'm okay. Let's get right. <laughs> Yes, I was thinking about the Hadith and what everybody else was saying. But the, um, I'm, I'm grateful that Allah has given us help. We try the angels. You know, that's there for us. What I was thinking about when we did the class about the resurrection and how people are going to be standing there and, and you're going to be standing before Allah. And that, you know, I know that was done at the end of Ramadan. And it just sort of like, really do not get out of my mind, <laughs> you know, kind of like, oh my God, you know. So the thing is, is that, you know, at the end of Ramadan, I find myself pushing myself, even though I have a very low energy rate with my, you know, within, but I find myself pushing myself, you know, go do your obligations, what you're supposed to do at the masjid, come back to the class, you know, and listen. You know, and um, I'm grateful that uh, what I have learned through this Ramadan is to get my prayers in order. I can do one with a prayer, you know, after my other prayers, uh, you know, either one touch of hood prayer, because I used to have a routine before, you know, I joined the class. And I just thank a lot for right now. Like I said, I have a terrible energy lever, but. I think about, okay, who is it that I haven't called? 
you know, in a long time. It doesn't matter on um, Muslim or non-Muslim, you know, because there are some old people that's alone. Yes. And, you know, they don't have too many people coming in and out, you know, right. so I have to think about them, you know, that's around me. And sometimes I try to call relatives and so forth. But the thing is, it just um, gave me a push. And Alhamdulillah, that Allah has given us uh, angels, you know, those that protect us and uh, you know, say good things to us to push us on because shaitan, you know, our personal agenda is going to be talking and it does try to make you feel like you want to draw back since Ramadan is over. But, you know, I said, no, you know, I still want to keep that drive that, you know, you know, like last week, it was such a heavy drive to push myself. And once I got home, I just wanted to pass out. But the thing is, is that I want to keep that drive. I just feel that drive in me. And um, that's going to give me energy. And I'm, I'm grateful that Allah has given us extra tools and let us know that he's here listening whenever we need him. Exactly. And that's the thing that keeps us going, you know. And that's why I was saying, especially for a lot of the sisters here that are alone and older, don't ever allow your personal gin. That's one of the things that I had to fight, too. As that anxiety that comes from that, your personal gen will try to make you think that you're all alone, that you have no one in this world, that, oh, you know, it makes you think the worst. But when the believer is never alone, as the law says in the Quran, he's always the second if there's one. He's always the third if there's two, you know. So I don't want any of us to ever feel that we're alone because once you start to feel that you are alone, that's when you start to lose hope. And when you start to lose hope, that's when all other kind of things happen. The believer is never alone. First of all, you have your angels assigned to you. Those angels never leave you. They never leave you until death. OK, you got at least two assigned to the front of you to protect you, at least two assigned to the back of you to protect you. And also, we always have a law. You know, a law is just a supplication away. All you got to do is say, Allah, I need you. And he comes running right there. He I'm here. What do you need? So don't allow your personal gens to push you to feeling that you're alone and you're helpless and that you are uh, uh, just have yourself to contend with because that comes from shaitan. The believer is never alone. Okay, are there any other comments? Okay, mashallah, this was a nice discussion, a wonderful hadith, and I'm so glad that everybody joined and participated. Okay, we're going to stop right here for today. For those of you listening on Facebook, let me remind you, she was speaking about the uh, Quran, Tej uh, I mean, the um, resurrection class, that's tomorrow, and I have the PowerPoint for that, and it's going to be something else, because we're still going to be speaking about that standing before law. Oh, yeah. Every one of us Muslims will have our one on one with a law on that day. The question is, is a law going to expose you before the people? Or will he do? Will he uh, hide your sins like he did the, 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 good, the, the good believer that we spoke of last time? And also, we're going to go into the nitty gritty of some of the questions, some more type of questions Allah is going to ask us about. So that class is tomorrow at nine o'clock. We don't want to miss that. And also tomorrow we have the book. Uh, we're going to be continuing with that. And I'll put out on the uh, when I send out post up the schedule, I'll put the pages to read for that. Uh, uh, that's at 10. And also we have my class at six. The um, get to know a law class, the Tahi class, Akita. We're going to speak more. I'm going to give you a quiz of what we discussed today about how people distort the names of a law. And then we're going to move on to the uh, to speak more about how people negate uh, their belief in a law 
by negating belief in his names and attributes. So we have a lot of classes tomorrow, three classes, four classes, plus this Hadith, four classes. And I will continue to broadcast all the classes and lectures to YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Telegram, and uh, Instagram, inshallah. So make sure everybody's here for that. So I'm going to close up for now on Facebook but and YouTube, but we are live here in the Zoom room. Feel free to join us in the Zoom room. Subhanakala huma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.